Hi Danny, Grace and Jude. Welcome to the foundation section. The first bit is what is type 1 diabetes? It's important to work through all this section because this is going to build your foundations for dynamic glucose management, mealtime insulin guide and the exercise guide as well also. So all the key things in here will just get laid on as we move on. Okay, pretty simply, let's start with what happens in someone's body without diabetes. Generally, they'll eat food, most of which carbohydrate impacts the glucose level in the blood. Carbohydrate goes in, gets digested into glucose, ends up in the bloodstream. The pancreas senses this, puts insulin out, insulin comes along, opens the door to the cell, glucose moves across. Basically, that's what happens. The liver also has a storehouse of glucose. It's continually dripping a little bit of glucose into the bloodstream, 24 hours a day. Therefore, the pancreas gives a little bit of insulin also 24 hours a day. That's what's happening, auto-regulated. As soon as the glucose level starts to get above 6.7 or 120 milligrams per deciliter, the pancreas kicks out more insulin. As the glucose level approaches 3.3 millimoles per liter or 65 milligrams per deciliter, the pancreas starts to slow down. Does it automatically and keeps that glucose level in a really tight range pretty much all of the time. So that's what happens in people without diabetes. Important to start there. So what happens to people with type 1 diabetes? So for some unknown reason, the immune system basically turns on the pancreas cells, the beta cells of the pancreas, what we call an autoimmune reaction, a little bit like friendly fire. So unfortunately, something happens, we're not quite sure why at the moment, and it's certainly not your fault. And the immune system turns on the beta cells of the pancreas, and you go from being able to produce as much insulin as you need to virtually none over a period of usually about a month or so. So then what happens is there's no insulin, there's no keys to come and open the cell doors. The glucose remains in the blood, so hence it goes really high, certainly above 11 or 200 milli, mil, 11 millimoles per litre or 200 milligrams per deciliter. And because no glucose can go across into the cells, the cells have to search for an alternative energy source. So they start to break down fat at a massive rate. And when you break down fat at a huge rate, you build up ketones and a byproduct of that is acid, which can make the blood very acidic and eventually can lead to death if untreated. So before insulin was around, getting type 1 diabetes was a death sentence. People didn't last more than a month or two, even on a no carbohydrate diet because you still need insulin to move glucose across into the cells for energy production, as well as growth and repair. So that's what's happened. It's basically like a friendly fire, unfortunately. So that's what happens. And the symptoms that you will have been experiencing of really high glucose levels means that the kidneys have to wee out loads of glucose. So you end up finding where all the toilets are. If you're like me, I my sort of peak of this was coming back from Australia on a 24 hour flight. I think I went to the toilet probably about 80 times and um, not too much fun. And obviously when you're drink, going to the toilet a lot, you're drinking a lot, no glucose, no energy. You also feel very tired. So that's what happened um, with, with getting type 1 diabetes. And I think this is something that is underappreciated. So something that I certainly struggled with at the beginning is I very much had, oh, poor me, I've got diabetes. None of my friends have got diabetes. I've now got to do all this other stuff, check my finger all the time for glucose measurements and take insulin. When really you can get on a bit of a downer thinking about things that way. Actually, if you spin it in reverse and think, well, realistically, natural selection has seen me off. I should be dead. You should, you know, the autoimmune reaction, no insulin production, I should be dead. So the human ingenuity of banting and best, finding out insulin um, from the dog, and then Genentech with um, the capitalist Robert Swanson and the biochemist Robert Herb Boyer, who actually um, patent patented uh, recombinant DNA technology for insulin, means that you can go down to the pharmacy now and get insulin that works very quickly, and you can get it down at the end of your street, which means you can live a normal life. So. Insulin has given us the opportunity for a full and thriving life, whereas really I should have been seen off. So every time that I get down about diabetes, I just think, well, I've had the opportunity. I've been given a second chance. Insulin has given us that chance. So there's a lot of people over 100 years who have worked really hard to give us this opportunity of a full and thriving life. And it's the opportunity to learn about diabetes to make sure you make the most of it. So how your insulin's working is pretty simply either by injections or by a pump. There will be a basal bit of insulin trickling in to look after the glucose coming in from the liver. 
And then each time that you eat, especially carbohydrate foods, you'll program in or work out an insulin dose to cover the glucose from that. As the food gets digested and goes in, the insulin is delivered by a pump or a pen, and that moves the glucose from the blood into the cells so you can produce energy. So that's essentially what we're trying to do with type 1 diabetes is match the glucose that goes into the blood with the right amount of insulin so that the glucose level stays between 4 and 7 millimoles per litre or 70 to 120 milligrams per deciliter um, keeping the glucose range as tight as possible. In reality, it is not quite that easy. So what we kind of think of is the target range being four to 10 millimoles per liter or 70 to 180 milligrams per deciliter. And the idea is you're trying to get a CGM line that keeps between four and 10 most of the time. And that's by matching the insulin you put in from a pump or injections to the exact amount that's going in from the food and also from the liver. That is what we're trying to do. Too much insulin. Uh, or lots of exercise dragging glucose out of the blood and then the glucose level goes below 4 millimoles per litre or 70 milligrams per deciliter and that's called a hypo, a low glucose level and that needs bringing up quickly. On the other side, if you don't give enough insulin for the food that you've eaten or there's not enough background insulin for the glucose that's produced in the liver, you end up with an excess of glucose in the liver and that's called a high glucose level or a hyper. That's more than 10 millimoles per litre or more than 180 milligrams per deciliter. So let's sum this up together. What is diabetes? Well, insulin we know opens the front door to the body cells to allow glucose to enter. And when you have an autoimmune reaction that um, kills off the, the beta cells ability to produce insulin, that's when you get type 1 diabetes. It's not your fault. There's nothing that you did to make that happen. So just forget those things and crack on. The next and most important thing is insulin is a gift. I should have been seen off, I should be dead, but I'm still alive because of the ability to give insulin from all those wonderful people over 100 years who have found what insulin is and then we now produce it just down and you can get it from the, the pharmacy. What we're aiming for is as much time in range between 4 and 10 millimoles per litre or 70 to 180 milligrams per deciliter, as much time in range as possible and we'll get into how much later. We want to minimise the time spent less than 4 millimoles or 70 milligrams per deciliter and we want to minimise the time above 10 millimoles per litre or 180 milligrams per deciliter. So that's what is diabetes complete. Now it's important to move on to what continuous glucose monitoring is and then start to think about how we can use that and the trend arrows to make the most effective diabetes management. So see you in continuous glucose monitoring.